film a quick social thing, y'all are gonna uh, be in this. I'm, I'm not as young as I used to I've be. I've never <laughs> seen you move so fast. I can't imagine what that looked like from the audience's perspective. <laughs> Gus, is your knee okay? No, it's not. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I've never heard you hit the ground louder than that. Why, why didn't you just go around the back? That's what I understand. That's exactly what I did, dude. I went around the back. No, Where I mean, do you think I went? Way, this, the back of the camera. Because then I have to walk all the way around that, all the way back over here. I barely made it as it was. <laughs> That's literally the most. You exercise know what? Next time, next do time you do it. How about that? What no, I'm not say? a shill. I'm not doing that. Heart you, Jeff. That's not. That's the wrong panel. Hey, everyone, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Phil. Phil. I'm Barbara. Oh. <laughs> Feel a lot of pressure. I'm Matt. Fuck. <laughs> and I'm Gus. Uh, so. What's the alcohol? You, you, what do you want? Eric, get Gavin something. Where is Eric? I don't even know who's Is that here. English? What did you just say? You said Eric, you jump, jump? G Gavin wants a drink. Eric Darp Darp. <laughs> what do you want? Phil, do you want a drink? Booze. I, I'll have whatever you have. Th three oh, boozes. He's having. Oh, the booze, yes, yes. Booze, double booze. Um, you almost ate shit running up the stage, dude. Oh, it's this, it's just so many people in this lot of stairs. There's like four of them. Confirmed. <laughs> it also doesn't help that we weren't planning on leaving, and then Bernie was like, so now? And then we well, oh, yeah. Well, what happened was is the queen was about to kick off. It was about to hit that chorus, and it was like, we could go now. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting Bernie to run, though. I think that's the first time I've ever seen you run. <laughs> I run. If Freddie Mercury's around, I'm running. Who wouldn't? It's true. It was, it was not planned in any way, and I felt kind of bad because I said it to Eric, uh-oh, you know, it's about to break. Should we run? He goes, yeah, yeah, now, 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 now. And security's like, can you please hold off a second? We're like, get out of the way. <laughs> It's Queen. So, Gus, I don't want to derail too much. You're, you're, you're looking at your phone. You have notes ready. These are my notes. We've been over this before. If I have an You say iPad, you don't want to derail, but you've got your derail device out. Why don't you pay attention to the podcast for once? What? What? I come prepared. <laughs> well, we were going to play Gavin or Google, but I guess we can wait. Oh! Not you know, guys know the song. Sing it along with me, Gavin or Google, Google or Gavin. Which one said it? Let's find out. I'm feeling lucky. All right. Oh, uh, you can't. I can't show the arm. No. All right. If you are not familiar with the rules of Gavin or Google, the rules of Gavin or Google are simple. I take a two or three word phrase and I feed it into the very popular search engine Google and I take the most ridiculous autocomplete I get for that phrase. I then take that same two or three word phrase, I feed it into the really, 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 really weird brain of Gavin Free. Whatever he comes back with, I put in the quiz, I ask them, who said this, Gavin or Google? I butchered those rules. I butchered them. That was not great. They, I butchered them. I butchered the last half of it. You all know how it works. This game? No, those, those rules were just for Phil Do you understand the game? Not at all. <laughs> Are it's you, really simple. It, it I'm going like to ask it, it, you two things, and you're going to tell me which one said it, Gavin or Google. Okay, that makes that part that makes sense. <laughs> the stuff you said before. Didn't. Are you nervous? Are you nervous, Bernie? Is everything okay down there? No, it's one of those things where when I started talking, I thought I don't know where I'm going with this, but my brain will figure it out by the time I get there. You just never got back on the road. Yeah, pretty much. All right, here we go. First question for Gavin or Google. The first phrase is. What's, God, the, what's the, uh... The phrase is, okay. why don't, why don't, why don't actors wear belts? <laughs> the first one, why don't actors wear belts? 
<laughs> the other is, why don't they make deodorant for butts? <laughs> why don't they make deodorant for butts? Barbara, which one was Gavin? Which one was Google? I legitimately don't know. <laughs> These both said, well, okay, he here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that why don't actors wear belts is Gavin because Gavin would never use the word butts. He would use the word arse. Unless it's a false flag. Or anus. I don't think I've ever, <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard Gavin not use anus or arse when he has an opportunity. So I'm gonna say that Gavin is the actor who's don't wear belts. Phil, which one was Gavin and which one was Google? I'm gonna go, so that made me concerned about arse. Uh, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say it's the butts because maybe, maybe butts was already in the conversation and just... Mm. So you're saying way. that I was butts? Yes, you were butts. Uh, I'm, I, I'm gonna agree with Phil and, and that's because we know Gavin's lack of butt cleanliness. It's true. We, we have talked about this before. He's never washed his butt So ever. since Gavin has never I washed his butt, I just don't want to dig he, the fingertips in. He may, he may have an odor issue he's worried about. Thank you. So in light of that information, I'm going to say butts is Gavin. Thank and you. you're agreeing Eric. with Phil then? Yes. A point goes to Gus and Phil. Yeah. <laughs> so. What the fuck, Gavin? In this search, I actually... Well, like, I, you put it in your armpit and stuff, but the anus just gets, like, a see, wipe. you're using anus! I did use anus, yeah. <laughs> but but the, why is there no anus safe deodorant that you can just wipe down there? You can't play the metagame, Barbara, because I changed it. His actual thing was, why don't they make deodorant for your asshole, was what he said. <laughs> but Google would never return that, so I had to modify it. You fell for my trap, Barbara yeah, Dunkelman. You, if you said asshole... I lured you been. in. You played your trap card. It worked and perfectly. now you're a point down. I see, I want to show, the, I have like eight of these things, and I want to show Barbara to see which ones are the best because they're all remarkably stupid. This is like when there's a woman with a remarkable chest next to me, and I'm just like, Go ahead. make eye contact, make eye contact. Don't look down, don't look down. <laughs> That's a great phone. way to describe someone's breast, it's remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else wants yeah! to. Tits. All right, the next phrase, number two here, is what is the best way? What is the best way? What is the best way to steal from Google? <laughs> Brilliant. What is the best way to ask someone how to spell saffron? <laughs> <laughs> saffron, like the spice? I'm assuming. <laughs> What is the way best to way to someone. ask someone how to spell saffron? Gus, why don't you start us off since you went last last time? Oh boy. Uh, can, can I get a repeat of the first phrase? What is the best way? What is the best way to steal from Google? I'm gonna go with what is the best way to steal from Google is Gavin. Okay. Poker face. Because it's what Google would not expect. <laughs> what? It's like Gavin said that. The, uh, see, I'm trying to get in the mind of Gavin here. Okay. Well, it worked. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with Saffron because I, I, could, I could see that being an issue for you. <laughs> I mean, how do you, no, Phil, no how do you ask someone to say, to spell saffron? How do you ask them? What's the polite way to do that? It's a conundrum we all face every it's, day. The correct way is pinkies up, in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. How do you spell saffron? I'm going to go with how do you steal from Google is a Gavin question. Yeah. Cheating. All right, so... Gus and Barbara, somebody should be keeping score because I'm definitely not doing it. <laughs> Gus and Barbara said that Gavin said how to steal from Google. You both get a point. That is yes. correct. So, like, what, what does Google would, do? Why like, would someone at Google want to know how to ask someone how to spell saffron? Is that a British thing? 
Are there different spellings of saffron? Is what I started wondering. Why would you have trouble asking yeah, someone how the, to spell the, it? Though? The fact that it's how do you approach the subject, and not how do you spell saffron? Right. How do you ask someone how to spell saffron? Hey, uh, how do you spell saffron? Me Solid wow, question. Barbara. <laughs> wow. Now that was I'm not the way to do that. Wondering. Let me Google it. <laughs> that was not the way to do it. Okay, our last one. And I think uh, I, we got like a three-way tie here. So what? Gonna, I think Gus is winning. No, I'm winning. Gus, Gus has two. We each have one. No. When I, when I said to keep score, I didn't mean keep score in Gus's favor. He's there all the time. <laughs> he, he's just, he's, for 21 years, he's been trying to stop me. It's impossible. I wish I had three options for this one. What color, dot, 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 what color? What color was an orange before orange was invented? <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh God, what color? What color is a rainbow at night? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh. I don't even know to, where to begin, so anybody who wants to take that can take that. Phil? Phil would you like to start this? Wow. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> this is the case of two stupids. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with orange because I think that's an amazing question. Uh, what color was an orange before orange yes, was invented? I love that. And you think that's Gavin? Yes. Okay. I'll have so much more respect for you if it was. Barbara? This one's the hardest one I think I've ever had to do. <laughs> because I feel like both of these would be Google questions. Although, are people who are Googling smart enough to know that oranges, the color orange, was invented from an orange? The orange one is, is Gavin, 100%. 100%. Nope. But wait. <laughs> I said nothing. Because we had a rainbow in Austin recently. Did we? And so maybe Gavin saw that and was like, hmm. Yes, but we haven't had any oranges in Austin <laughs> for a very long time. Orange is Gavin. Orange is Gavin. Final answer. I, I, have, I have to agree because a rainbow at night involves light which is a subject Gavin is very familiar with from having to film slow-mo guys. Uh, so I believe the orange question has to be Gavin. It should be called red-yellow, by the way. In a remarkable turn of events, you are all wrong. Oh. Gavin Free wins. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Free want to know what color a rainbow is tonight. Hey, please explain that. Well, you, d you don't really see him, do you? <laughs> That's like asking, what, what color is a dog bird? Because you never really see them, do you? Right, Gus, but do you ever think the moon has been bright enough and it's been raining to produce the most magnificent... <laughs> the most magnificent what, Gavin? Well, rainbow. <laughs> Did but... you stop halfway through because you realized how dumb it was? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious as to why the question trailed off. Well, what makes a rainbow? The sun. Well, no, no, it's, it's light makes a rainbow. And what makes the light? The sun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you get some sun off the moon. That's you get, how you see the moon, Gus. Some, but you can't see anything. But it's so dim. It's so little. You've never it's had a enough. moonlight dinner? What are you on about? <laughs> and guess what? There is, when you have a moonlight dinner, what's on the table? A candle. What's the candle made out of? Fire. What's the sun made out of? Fire. You have the sun on your table when you have a moonlight dinner. But what color is the rainbow, Gus? What color is a rainbow above a candle? <laughs> All right, you win. I just want to thank you, Gavin, for saying something stupider than my, you can get a sunburn from a fire. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I hate to even bring that back up. I feel like I should have read some more of these. So the winner, I got to say, even though Gus has the most points, but the fact they all got it wrong means Gavin's the winner, right? Gavin's our first time ever winning Gavin or Google. Thank you. Everyone here, witness history. <laughs> the first time Gavin won, Gavin Dumbled or Google. Google. <laughs> it is he paid off for him. I just have to read one more of these. It just seems like so Gavin. God, there's two of them that are good. Why can't? Why can't frogs chew their food? <laughs> I can't even read this one. <laughs> Why can't vets give animals furry band-aids? <laughs> that one's Gavin. <laughs> Some of them I'm, are so obviously Gavin. I'm, I'm into it. Why not? They always look so stupid look, with I, a shaved spot. I always say it looks like my dog has a chicken wing for like, <laughs> yeah. a, 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 like a leg. Give them a nice furry band-aid so they're not... Or like a sock. 
that looks like the fur. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I like how you look at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> I just like the idea of like a guy cutting his leg. Quick, give him a pair of socks. <laughs> After all that, they're just going to slap a cone on them anyway. Who cares? They won't be able to see it even. The other one was, how come? How come? That was a dangerous one to look up. Nice. Yeah. How come? How come cats are afraid of cucumbers? Does anyone understand that? Yeah. yeah. They're legit afraid of have you not seen? Yeah. Have you not seen the videos? No. With the, no. Cats are terrified of cucumbers. Really? Yeah. I probably have seen it. This is going to be like another Toblerone thing. Yeah, they, they think they're snakes. It's a primal thing. It's because they're too big for that pussy. <laughs> Barbara, don't come in, everybody. Hey, where's Barbara's parents? <laughs> this is the point of the podcast where we point out Barbara's parents. Hello. How are y'all? Thank you. Dunkle Mints. Dunkle Mints. An annual occurrence. But the other one in that was, how come there's no... Oh, God, I can't read these. Uh, how come there is no Guinness Book of Moon Records? <laughs> Well, thanks for coming to the podcast, everyone. Uh, we call that an ender. That's it. Like... <laughs> hey, everyone. I'd like to remind you that it, this episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Experian. You know, the better your credit score, the easier it is to get the stuff you want or the less you have to pay. So the question is, why is it so hard to raise your score? Uh, now it won't be thanks to Experian. They've launched Experian Boost, which is a brand new way to instantly increase your credit score for free. And a higher credit score can help you establish and get access to credit and preferred rates for the things you want and need in life. Experian is on a mission to help boost America's credit score, which will help millions of people across the country build and get better access to credit. People all across America already have raised their credit scores with Experian Boost, and you should too. Uh, it used to take months to see your credit score rise a point or two. With Boost, you can increase your credit scores instantly. Boost is free to use and only available from Experian. Uh, you know, for a long time I've talked about um, how difficult it was when I first <laughs> tried trying to build my credit to buy a house. It took, it took a year for me to build it to the point where uh, I could get that house. And something like this with Boost, you'd be able to really shorten that time and uh, really increase your credit score dramatically much more quickly. I can't believe it's taken this long for someone to do this. What are you waiting for? Experian Boost can potentially help you establish or increase your access to credit. You can boost your FICO score instantly for free. Boost is only available at Experian.com slash RT. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N dot com slash RT. Thanks to Experian for sponsoring this episode of the Rich Teeth Podcast. <laughs> wow. Some, things were, some were just too obvious, so I had yeah, to go you, That was too obvious that it was me? Very clearly you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I would love to have, like... The longest jump on the moon. Like, yeah. that's your record. I don't know. It would be like the, the same bunch of guys. Right, it's like, like 10 records. people ever could possibly qualify for that. Yeah. Did you see uh, online, uh, somebody posted the video of like the early, the pre-visualization they did of the early Apollo missions. So it's like 1950s sci-fi proof of concept for going to the moon. Oh, the storyboards that Kubrick used? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that they use for the... It, it does make sense why they wouldn't put that out for a long period of time. Right. With the theory that it's all been faked. But yeah, I thought it was fascinating. I just thought you would love that. I guess you it, haven't seen it. I, I was talking with, uh, with Becca the other day. I think I see her over there. Hi, Becca. Um, hey, Becca, did you ever find who had that money? So did you pocket the money? That's a very Hi. long way of saying, yes, I kept the money. <laughs> You're going to uh, donate to charity? Hey, how you doing, Clem? How you Hi, doing? Clem. Becca was telling me that the, the, the meteor, we were talking about the, the meteor that came and killed the dinosaurs and ended the dinosaurs. Allegedly, age. allegedly. And she said that it hit with such force that it speculated that, you know, it, it killed all this life instantly on Earth, and it speculated that it hit with so much force that there may be dinosaur fossils on the moon. Really? So it flung dinosaurs at the moon? Yes. <laughs> that, that, I got that right, right, Becca? I'm not saying it wrong? Bone chunks. Bone chunks. Okay. Yeah, it'd be amazing if a whole dinosaur made it up there. <laughs> and he survived. I mean, he'd be on the Guinness Book of Moon Records. Yeah. <laughs> first dinosaur to go to the moon. First dinosaur on the moon. That would be freaky if they landed on the moon, though, and the first thing they saw was a dinosaur skull. That would have freaked them out. Right. Like, and I, it made me start wondering, like, what kind of conspiracy theories would he have had if, like, the first people land on the moon, they, like, they brought back rocks and stuff, and they analyzed those rocks. It's like, there's a dinosaur bone in here. Like, that would have really set people... Crazy. But isn't the moon just a chunk of Earth that got no knocked up there? Yeah, but way before the dinosaurs. That's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> I was on eBay, and they sell... I don't know why I was looking this up. They sell chunks of meteor on eBay. 
And that seems like something that you shouldn't just sell to people. Am I crazy to think that? No, like, they do. You can buy like, you can buy dice made out of uh, meteorites. Yes. That seems weird. It seems like you cut one open though. There could be like, uh, like a like a hollowed out part with like some bacteria in it. Just seems like the beginning of a sci-fi movie. You've watched way too many sci-fi <laughs> movies. <laughs> Wasn't that like The Thing or something? <laughs> I feel like there's been a million sci-fi movies like that. Mark, Marcus's ring is made out of a meteor. Our production designer, Marcus, mm. he actually went viral years before we started working with him at Rooster Teeth because he had a chunk of meteor that he fashioned into his wedding band. And I, had, I didn't realize that was him until years later when he said it. I was like, I, I saw that Imgur gallery of like a billion years ago. It wasn't a billion years. It was like five. <laughs> how, how weird to be like, to have, I, you know, we've been doing this for so long, and Phil, I know you have as well, like creating content on the internet. It's weird to me that you can go viral and become well known through like an image or gallery. It's like just an image platform. It's like, can you imagine if someone went viral on Flickr? Or like, like oh yeah, that, that, that person's a Flickr star. <laughs> Why not? Why, why not? But it, it never happened. But you know, you, we recognize Marcus and we know people from, that we've met who like, oh yeah, they had something really big on Imgur. It's just like, there's so many different platforms and ways to approach it. Well, so we always talked about before too, it's like, all these things start somewhere. Like, the, even going back to like the old, like, what are they, Rage comics or whatever they were, like Trollface. Mm -hmm. Somebody drew that. Like, and everybody used that image for about three or four years straight, but nobody, I don't have any idea who's the no, person who some, drew some, Trollface. It wasn't you, how dare guy, you. I thought some, you were gonna ask who's still using it. Some guy licenses that image. Like the problem, the one, you know, like problem question mark? Yeah. Like the guy who made it licenses that. If you use that image, you have to pay him a licensing fee. So he's really rich? In, in order to, what? Is he super rich? I don't know if he's super rich, but he's, he's getting compensated for the work he did that like, that everyone uses, and it became part of internet vernacular for so long. But it's so fascinating, you don't even, you know this about this guy, you don't know this guy's name. No idea. Who, Do you I, know what country he's in? He, he, I, I believe he's from the United States. He could be here, and we wouldn't know. Are you here? Yeah, he's we're here. Man he's racking up the royalty up. money. <laughs> Let me see, who made Trollface? Let me see if I can look this up. There used to be a website you could go to to easily find all of them. It was like Rage, Rage Faces, but it was like ragefac.es. So you could find them all like in one place, and you could like click on them and copy and paste them very easily uh, for use like yeah, a text. Yeah, I remember that. They had like all the different emotions and stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna ask. This is your first time at RTX, right, Phil? Yeah, this is amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. This is. It's awesome. I. Uh, I was like, I said it on the internet, not just for internet points, but this is like, I think this is my my new favorite convention. Very chill. I'm sure there's a, a lot of people whose first RTX this is, too. You guys out there? That's a lot. You're Good not company. alone. Yeah. First con. Did you say first con or worst con? <laughs> <laughs> Take my pick. I mean, technically it would be both, yeah? Security. Oh, it would. Guy. Excellent point. Oh, security. No, security said it. <laughs> <laughs> walk, walking in this direction. <laughs> so, Phil, does that mean you're going to be coming every year from now on? <laughs> I think so. Do you have time to do that kind of thing? I mean, can you even travel to go to cons? One of the big reasons why we started RTX was we were going to cons, like, mm -hmm. by like, and Barb, you still do this for voice acting stuff, but we were gone, like, what, 20 weekends a year? Sometimes? It was constant, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's just, it's, oh, what? Constant. That was unintentional. <laughs> even I missed that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's weird, because, yeah, it takes time, but it's also, I have two children, and this is, like, a vacation. Yeah. So, I'm like, it's like, oh, yeah, I have to go to that panel and go to that thing where I get to talk to people I haven't seen in a while and meet people that are super, super nice to me uh, yeah, and stroke my ego. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, no, yeah, I love this. This is great. I really like RTX because I get to see people I haven't seen since last RTX who work for us. <laughs> I haven't seen Kerry since last RTX. Yeah. It was really nice to see him. I, I ran into him a few weeks ago at the studio, and I didn't, like, I didn't realize he was Kerry at first. Like, I was just walking by, and I saw that it was someone who was like, oh, hey, Kerry, what's up? Like, it had been a while since I'd seen him. Well, how many, I mean, this might be like a confusing one at this point, but how many people work for you guys? Too many. <laughs> no, I was like, because some uh, people come to my studio and they're like, oh, this is big. And then I went to get your guys' old compound. And I was like, what? This is so humbling. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to do an Archie short where it's like, Rooster Teeth, is it a cult? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Lock the doors, please. Everyone, does everyone have their Kool-Aid? Everyone uh, <laughs> ready to drink? Did someone just go woo for the suicide pact? <laughs> is, is that a thing? 
But uh, I think where last head count that I remember was about 420, Jabla- 400, 419 people. Damn it. <laughs> nice. Who wants to get hired real fast? <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of people. It's a lot, a lot of people. And when you, Gavin and Barbara, started eight years ago? Uh, it'll be eight years in December. So how many people were at the company when you guys started? I think I was employee number 28. Yeah, late 20s. Late 20s. So 29? 29. There's <laughs> <laughs> so much room left after that. One more. I, I had kind of an unintentional asshole moment earlier. <laughs> unintentional. I was... Uh, I went over to play uh, Vicious Circle, coming out soon, uh, uh, and uh, I walked in the, the back door, I walked in the exit to go uh, play, because I was scheduled to play there with uh, some, some people who were lined up, some uh, Artex attendees. And I kind of just like walked in and uh, walked straight up to a station, and uh, someone stopped me and was like, oh, excuse me, sir, uh, do, do you work here? I was like, ha, 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 good joke. And I just like walked by them, and I kept going to the station, I was like, and I stopped, and I was like, they may not know that I actually do work here. Like I, and then in my mind, I started panicking. I was like, what's the appropriate etiquette? Do I turn around and say <laughs> yes and correct myself, or do I just continue with the asshole power move? So is this someone who worked on Vicious Circle? I believe so. Should we guess what you did? You want to guess what I did? I'm going to guess you just maintain the assholeness. Yeah, I'm going to guess you did absolutely nothing and thought, I'll tell that on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Path of least <laughs> resistance. I agree. I did nothing. <laughs> That would require more talking to another You're person. Right. And then I was like, I'm just going to make it more awkward. Like, I'm sure someone else saw it and told him. I hoped. I didn't turn around. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel really bad. And it's been eating me up for like three hours now. <laughs> Do you want to take a break from the podcast to go talk to him now? <laughs> I guess I can go back. He seemed fine. Like, when I turned around later after I was done playing the game, he seemed okay. So I guess someone told him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, Phil and I had a discussion today with a uh, panel where we got to talk for like an hour today. It was, yeah, I, I had a great time on that panel. So if you're there, I'm going to retell a story I told there, but it had a similar thing happen to me where yesterday I was going back to my hotel and there were attendees staying at the hotel. We all get in the elevator. It's a long elevator ride up and it's a packed elevator. And I'm in this corner and in the opposite corner is a guy in a Ruby costume, in a cosplay. And I just, across the elevator, I said, hey, I just want to say I really like your cosplay. And he goes, thanks a lot. He goes, What's your name? And I'm totally fine with that, except for the entire elevator went, ooh. (laughs) And one guy was like, yikes. (laughs) So uh, that was fun. Anyway, that kid had to be ejected for reasons we can't explain. (laughs) But his cosplay looked great. (laughs) I feel like elevators really make people panic. Because I, I had one last night, I was going up and someone was in it, and right at the last minute, they noticed that I was behind them in it. And I could see them panic, and I it was like, oh, what, look at it. He got off on his floor, he's like, I, I just wanted to say, oh, <laughs> no. and I was like, <laughs> oh no. It's like, the timing, the timing, just like say one, I, was just, I wish I could. Because all he saw was my face going, <laughs> Misconnection. But was it was it was it a was it a reel you trying to stop it or you were like oh no? <laughs> uh, no, I was genuine. I was just like, oh. it like when the a, door open button. When so the car is waiting across the street and someone's crossing the street and they do that fake jog where they're just walking but they're moving their arms to make it look like they're rushing across the street to move out of the way. <laughs> but I, you know what? No. But I appreciate the fake jog. No. I, no. No, I appreciate it because no. that's at least an effort of like. I'm acknowledging that you're waiting for me. Like, if I'm going to take a right turn, there's somebody crossing. And then they do, like, the fake jog. I'm like, okay, at least they're doing it. As opposed to the dude who's just, like, strolling across, you know, through <laughs> the crosswalk. He knows he has the right of way. Like it's an fun. asshole. We have opposite perspectives on this. I think people do the fake jog to make themselves feel better, not to make you feel better. They want to feel like they're rushing to get further across, but they're not actually making any effort. <laughs> they are. They're not. They are. They're not moving any faster. So any effort they make is worthless. Even the acknowledgement that they know they're keeping you waiting, you don't think that's enough of a courtesy? No, I mean, they can wave or something. Like, that's fine. I would rather be like, oh, you know, wave. Cool, whatever. It's, I don't care. It's fine. Don't fake jog to make yourself feel better. So you'll do, do any? How many of you fake jog in that situation? That's See? right. Because you live in society. How many, <laughs> hate, how many hate the fake jog? There are dozens of us. Cynical. 
literally dozens. Literally dozens. Liter- uh, probably two thirds of the audience didn't answer because they're like, "What the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? It, How for, bored are you people in your cars paying attention to shit like this?" <laughs> yeah, for people watching the the video or listening to the audio, almost nobody raises their hand to <laughs> either of those questions. <laughs> You know, I did the, even though I butchered the rules, I did the Gavin or Google at the top of the show just so the audio listeners could hit eject if they want to. Because <laughs> this is always a really tough podcast to listen to from an audio perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So get possible. him in, get him out. <laughs> Bye, guys. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> the weird thing to me is sometimes, you know, we'll put this out as the podcast and we'll get, invariably get the comment that's like, it's really weird. They inserted like a laugh track into this week's episode. <laughs> So, for those, we're recording live in front of an actual audience. There are real humans here. There is no laugh track. Hell yeah. What is something, someone said, I love you, mom. What is something we could never get, like, a whole crowd of people to say that would prove that it's a real crowd? You just asked a crowd of thousands of people to say, just come up with a word. <laughs> and all we heard was bleh. Do it. The only person I could hear was the first guy who shouted, and he just yelled, bananas. Like, that was literally... <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I heard, too. It's like he was waiting for that moment. You could, just yelled, bananas. Could you everyone could, yell, bananas, on the count of three? <laughs> one, two, three. That Fuck was, yeah. That was really aggressive, y'all. Who was the first person who said bananas over the... Bananas! We did it. We, we did, did it. it. We, filled your, we filled your dream. Ra- raise your hand if you refused to say bananas just then. <laughs> nah, that was some of you. I would have been one of them. We, we had a fun thing today for the panel. Uh, it was a conversation with Bernie and Phil DeFranco today, and that's what it was. But then I showed up, and it was literally like, it was a table like this for two people. Like, and eight microphones. Did you sit on opposite ends? We did. We sat on the very ends, opposite each other. Like an old, <laughs> old married couple having dinner in some mansion somewhere. Did it's you pass just- the salt? It's no, a lot it was... of work to strike all this. Look, like they got little clips on everything. Yeah. They got clips. <laughs> look, what? Look. There's dozens. There's as many people who hate people who fake jog. <laughs> we used to have, uh, for this panel, we used to have like couches and stuff like that. Though. We had couches know. once. Yeah, wait, that's what I meant by used to. You, by the way. You. For people who listen to the podcast regularly, we were backstage waiting, or we were in, um, in the hallway here. And oh, th- that's not true. Bernie, Sorry, Bernie, this is a knee-jerk reaction <laughs> to when Gus talks to me. Bernie looks at me and goes, so the podcast, uh, that's in Ballroom D, right? I was like, Bernie, we've talked about this. We've talked about this on the podcast. It's in Hall 1. We've already established I don't listen to the podcast, even when I'm on it. I'm over here on my phone looking up stuff on Google. That's what I'm doing. That's my job here. Hall one. Your and job has to be like the tour guide and say, you go here, you go there. We had a sofa one time. What's that? We had a sofa one time. And it was great. It was great. We, is that the one we had the Casper sponsorship? Yes. Yep. Is and that the one did... where you made me sniff some protein shake? Uh, was anyone here for that podcast? Hell yeah. That was the uh, Gavin or Gaggle variant. We had that backstage. I actually recorded it back here in like the bowels of the convention center. Don't use that word with the the story. (laughs) It's very appropriate, trust me. Uh, There is a big, like, one of those metal commercial fridges, and it looks like it's been there about 10 or 15 years, and it has a sign out of it, uh, on it that says, out of order. And so I said to Gavin, I will give you $5 if you go up to that fridge, which has been unplugged for God knows how long, and just open the door and smell as hard as you can. And Gavin couldn't even put his hand on the handle without constantly gagging. It was well, just a lot of this. To be fair, uh, I was, couldn't uh, really understand the instructions because you were like, how much money would it take for you to, <laughs> if you were to, <laughs> <laughs> barely got through saying it. What really set you off was the, like, really nasty grease stain at the top of the door. Yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> But then Barbara just walked up between us and like opened it up and smelled it. And there was like a wood pallet in there? There was nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> but like even after I opened it and showed you guys that there was nothing in there, they were still gagging. Isn't it? That's is Gavin it? or Gaggle, though. That was actually the only time I've seen Gavin throw up on stage. Have you ever thrown up anywhere else on stage? In front of a live audience? No, that was the only one. I threw up on immersion once, but yeah, that was like, the, it was like a, half a half a mug of what? Extra Life? Yeah. yeah. But that's that was a, a lot. Bunch of drunk coworkers that are there for that. That was my nightmare, though, like as a kid, 
I was worried that I was going to throw up at school. Is that like a fear for anybody else? Was that anybody? Yeah. Like that was like the worst thing that could happen to me as a kid is I would throw up at school and other people would see me do it. And these people paid money to watch you throw up. I, I, uh, I pooped my pants in kindergarten once. <laughs> that was pretty bad. But, uh, yeah. Did you move schools? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> it was unrelated, but yeah, I did. That was, uh, that was bad. So I think I feel like that shaped me. And to this day, I worry about shitting myself in public. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm super worried. Even like if I'm going to get on a plane or if I know I'm traveling, like, oh God, when did I last take a dump? It's like, what's the timing on this? Am I going to be like, what if we're on the plane and we're delayed and we can't take off and I have to stay in my seat and like I really have to go? Like, it, I worry about it. You got to calm down. And I think it's because of that incident from the time <laughs> it happened to me in kindergarten. It's like, this thing happens to you when you're, at such an impressionable age that like for the next decades of your life it shapes you and it's like and now I worry about when I have to take a dump. Wait, how old are you? Is this kindergarten? Right? I was five or six. So were you capable of wiping your own ass at that yes. point? Yes. Okay. Why? Well, because some, some kids are like really young at school. You don't want like the teacher to be wiping your ass. Do the do teachers do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, what think... if someone goes to shits to school and can't wipe their own ass? <laughs> the nurse? Actually, yeah, I did go to the nurse's office. That's a good call. I had to wait for my mother. <laughs> yeah, so, no, one, no one touched my butt. Okay. So you're worried, though, even like a plane ride, you're worried that's too much time. Like if I said, you've got to hold it. You've got to hold it. What's your max? Is it an hour and a half? Oh, no. No, not, not max that. Max hold it? Like, yeah. Not, not maybe that long. 30 minutes? Yeah, go with that. Maybe 30. Dude, I'm like eight days. What are you guys, what's going on with you? Eight days? Like if, I, if I'm at work, I just wait till the end of the day. That kind of thing. That's, what were you that's not healthy. Were you like shitting volcanic it is, it, rock? Did you ever hear about the sur uh, Survivor host, uh, Jeff Probst? I think he was on Stern, he talked about how he would specifically, when they were shooting, he didn't want to interrupt anything, so if he had to pee, he would just hold it, and he like, ruined his own bladder from doing that and like went and talked about it and like he uh how long were they filming for well those some of those shoots are in the middle of nowhere for long periods of time and he's probably but, one of those rivers where if you pee in the river the fish goes up a, here that's, that's an urban legend that's not even true but how no, do you if know you, also, if you, also don't pee in the river just pee on the fucking ground but yeah, but no, isn't it it's a thing though if you hold it it'll it's devastating to, it's like, uromycetosis poisoning yeah <laughs> but that's so my, i guess my question is but for you right you're doing good in life what's the worst thing that comes out of like if you shit your pants right now What's the worst thing that happens? Do it. There's about 4,000 people filming it. But what does that matter? You guys I, are in the splash I guess, zone. I guess so. Like, <laughs> They're in the splash zone. <laughs> splash zone. I, I guess. I guess it's content, right? Like it's attention. Yeah, we're there's all a, characters. Th there's a Mashable article about it. You'll never believe what happened in RTX Austin. No. And then attendance doubles next year. Yeah, but then in Variety, they're like, Gus is brave. <laughs> like, he was That's the first to open the door. <laughs> Literally. I talked about this on the Always Open panel earlier, but I, I don't think I've ever fully shit myself, but I've definitely have had poo, like, kiss my underwear. Okay. You got, everyone here has had that. Everyone. And if you say no, you're a liar. Everyone has prairie dogged some shit in their life. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, though? The phrase I say, like, I shit my pants... Why do I have to specify that they're my pants? I mean, I can't shit somebody else's pants. Because you probably wouldn't say, I shit pants. <laughs> like, but there is a point at which pants, you have to say they're my pants. It's just part of well, the way you if say, you like, say if you say the pants, a lot of questions pop up. <laughs> yeah, like, like where you say, I rip, I rip the pants. pants. You have to say, I rip my pants. And then if you say, I shit pants, then you think pants came out. <laughs> But wasn't there a Kmart commercial a few years ago where it was like some <laughs> where guy, a guy shits his pants? No, some guy was ordering clothes online, and he, he like the whole commercial was, "I just ship my pants. I just ship my pants. Like I can't believe it. I just ship my pants." I was like, "I can't believe that's a one. I can't believe that's a commercial. Two. I can't believe it's Kmart. <laughs> Three. I can't believe Kmart's still around." I'm here with Chris Kokinos at the Full Sail booth. We're here at RTX. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. That's so amazing. we're here to talk uh, about all the things you're doing with Full Sail. Uh, you, you're from, you went to Full Sail, right? Yeah, yeah, 2008. Jeez, wow. 
Oh my, that was a long time ago. Time flies. Uh, it really does. So you've been doing uh, live streams, uh, kind of talking about the different things you do, and you've got one coming up this Thursday at 4 p.m. Why don't you tell us a little more about those? Yes, yeah, so we've been highlighting the animation pipeline as it kind of goes through each stage. Uh, this week, coming Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Time, we'll be talking about animation in that portion of the pipeline. We've got some great guests. I'm super excited to talk to them. Uh, and then we'll be doing another one later this month. I'm so excited about it. So speaking of animation, here at the Full Sail booth at RTX, they're having uh, intro to animation sessions. So if people are curious if they want to see if it's something that is for them, they can come see, like, kind of scratch the surface and see what the process is about, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what Full Sail has always been about. It's the hands-on experience, right? And I think they're kind of giving you a small little taste of that here at RTX. It's, it's pretty cool. And we at RTX, we debuted the, the Rooster Teeth Animated Adventure uh, talking about uh, animation, the animation process, which for everyone who's not here at RTX is coming out uh, later this month, I think late July, we'll have that out. And uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? Have you seen that so far? Uh, yeah, I worked on it. I actually did all oh. the sound on it, and you were incredible. You, you made you made my, my heart sing. You don't have to tell me I'm incredible. I know I'm incredible. So if anybody wants more information, they can check out uh, fullsale.edu slash roosterteeth to get more information and uh, see all the great things that Full Sail's doing, not only at RTX, but outside of RTX. For sure, yeah. So uh, thanks. Uh, we'll throw it back to you, Gus. I didn't ask this before the panel, but is it cool if we play a quick Gavin or Gaggle? Oh, really? <laughs> Do we have a theme song for that? No. You want me to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Barbara, you didn't talk to me about this. Did you bring something? Um, oh, you're going to read a story that we have to describe? Barbara, your parents are right there. It's okay. This is not my story. Um, okay. I'm sure a lot of you might be familiar with the story. I don't know if you guys are. Oh, Do you know the Jolly Rancher story? No, no, no. Yeah, yes. Oh, no. my God. What is it? Is it bad? <clears throat> this man has scared me. Okay, if you, if you have any kind of sensitivity at all, you should leave Austin immediately. <laughs> oh, whoa. A sprinter. Are you sure? Someone's <laughs> running, running away. <laughs> That's a oh, good Becca. move. Oh, Becca's running away with our children. <laughs> let, let, let Clementine get out of here. Yeah, I'll give her, I'll give her a, a minute or so. I don't so. think I actually know the story. I just heard the story enough times. Like, I got to say, the two girls, one cup. I'm proud right. to say, I she never gave us watched okay that. Sign. I never watched oh, that. And they're clear. Um, so I'm just reading the one off of Urban Dictionary. I don't know if this is the accurate I'm going to get a drink. So, <laughs> So, Bernie, you know this story? I, I know of the story. I really can't tell you what it's about. How bad is, how bad is so it? So, is it just whoever gags first and we're done with the story? No, we keep reading. Oh, we keep oh reading. God. Okay. I mean, it's a complete you know story. This story. It's no. a good story? Okay. Okay. I have no idea. Oh. Steve and his girlfriend, Samantha, went off to college in August. She went to Florida State. He went to Penn State. Why is that relevant? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Backstory. Back so, story. she decided to fly to Pennsylvania to visit him. He was really happy to see her, so he decided to give her some oral action. He had done this numerous times before, and he always enjoyed doing it. But for some reason, this time, she smelled really horrible, oh and she tasted even worse. He didn't want to offend her, though, because he hadn't seen her in months. So he put a Jolly Rancher in his mouth to cover it up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> even though it didn't do too much to help. To be fair, I just gagged because I was imagining watermelon flavor. <laughs> <laughs> In the course of eating her out, he accidentally pushed the candy inside of her and stuck a finger in to grab it out. He, he took it out and put it back in his mouth and bit it. That guy's, we're in the splash zone for that guy. Only, it wasn't the Jolly Rancher. That's enough. It was a nodule of gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> what happened next? As in, the blister-like structure that... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's enough. You're going to uh, end on the cliffhanger? Barbara Dunkelman, everybody. Barbara Dunkelman. Barbara. I just want to say, the first three rows, just like, they leaned over like you're going on a, down a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? I, di I didn't know it had nodules. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> well, Gavin, don't get right up against the vinyl. That's disgusting. I didn't even get to the best part. No. <laughs> yes, you did. Is this I smell a post show. <clears throat> 
Oh, no. As in, the blister-like structure that gunnery makes filled with dis... Stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Diseased pus was the size of a fucking Jolly Rancher, and the poor guy bit it. Barbara? Barbara, I hate this story so much, I'm gonna go over and hang out with Eric. That's how much I hate it. That's the gist of it, you guys can come back, it's all done. It's, it's over. <laughs> the trauma. So, um, Barbara. Did they break up? Yes. <laughs> Basically, it was discovered that she was cheating on him, got gonorrhea. That's how we found out. <laughs> Get those the fuck out of here. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that's incredible. That's something. I, Ugh. I uh... Ugh. Where can I find that story? <laughs> My diary. <laughs> Just wanna... Rem Why would I write about some guy going down on me and me having gonorrhea? <laughs> I love that you, cool. can, you can find stories like this, and I, the, sometimes you don't you know. Love if that they're... you can find stories like well, this. Well, it, it makes me think about the story of the guy with no. the drumstick. Oh, that was great. Where it's like, I'm not going to get into all the details right now, but um, I like that there's an outlet where people can have these life. It's, it's kind of like us on the podcast. So you have a life experience and you want to share it with people. The, the short version of the guy with the drumstick was, it was this guy who realized he liked having his prostate massaged, and he had never done it before, and he couldn't. By the way, he discovered this in a doctor's office, that he likes this, so you can imagine and how he, awkward that was. He had to go to a music store and buy a drumstick and pretend he was a drummer. That was uh, a weird logical leap that right. he made. Like, there that were, was a normal thing. There were a lot of leaps, but I like that the internet provides an outlet for people to share these stories, because then you can read, like, that, that has never happened to me, but it's an entertaining story to read. That I hope never happens to me, that Jolly Rancher story. But you're like, I guess these things happen to people. Like, you, you, it's just a, a way to, uh, to gain insight into the overall human experience and, and really learn about these things. Because before, when we were young, like, we never would have heard this story. No! Good! I, <laughs> I'm curious. I love, I love how romantic you've made this. <laughs> no, no, it's, I'm glad it's never happened to me, but I'm also kind of glad I've heard it. How is everything so loose up there? It makes it sound like he's like reaching into a bag of trail mix. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it sounds like he was. It's true. Like a one-for-one one swap. <sighs> the worst part is that he bit it. Stop, 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 <laughs> stop. Just want to remind everyone, Barbara Dunkelman has a college oh. degree. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. She went because she went to university to get this job. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> Do you have? Are you like? How far are you out from university at this point? Um, well, I just turned thirty. Woo! Don't tell anyone. Um, so I guess eight years, because I came here right after I graduated, basically. Okay. So eight you guys years. are cheering for thirty, huh? Really? <laughs> I just turned forty-six. <laughs> How's it feel? You're lying. You're lying. That cheer was a lie. I, could feel I feel it. like that was more of a, hey, you're alive cheer. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> so are you like, are you still, is, is Canada the same as the US where it's like horrific college debt and everything? Not or, at all. Really? Not at all. Is it, what's, what's going I on? I think my tuition um, was $1,700 a semester. Really? I think, there was, I think there was one year where my books were more expensive than my tuition. I think it's actually pretty common now. Yeah. Like a lot of professors will write the book in their class. You got to buy the book and then you can't. $300 and sure. you could sell it for eight. Wow. <laughs> do, Not a good investment. Do, yeah. do you ever read like the personal finance subreddit? Um, I, I love it. It's great. It's really super insightful. But it, I feel like all too often you see posts by people who are, I, I just read one last week that was like, I need help. I've got $160,000 in student debt oh and God. I've got a job making $15 an hour. Yeah. And I have no idea how to tackle this. And it's just, I don't understand how you can get out from under that and then have, have a life, right? Like the, 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 the US is built on this idea where you graduate college, you get a job, you buy a house, you buy a car, you incur debt 
right? And then that, that's how the US succeeds, yay. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, you, you, from step zero, you've already got this crushing amount of debt. You can never progress in your life and, and do any of the things that you're quote unquote supposed to do. Uh, and I just don't know what that solution is. And I feel like we're gonna start hearing a lot more about that in the next couple of years. Well, that's kind of my life. I mean, Philly, you got two kids. Yeah. So it's, I'm a little it's, bit further down the road. It's but, racking yeah. up already, like just with, with school in L.A. How old it, are they? Uh, so five and two. So the second one or this is about to go into like a, whatever. The, it's not a preschool, but it's like it is a preschool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my, my kids, like I got one who's getting close to going off to college. He's applying and everything too. And it's like it's really going to college was kind of the default when I graduated high school. This is like early 90s. And uh, now, I don't, I don't know. It's like it's weird. It's really weird, this tipping point where it's like, do you have to go to college? Is that a necessary thing? But I also don't want to tell my kid, right. hey, maybe you shouldn't, you know, <laughs> maybe you should give up on this college idea. I think it just depends on the job. Like, if you're going to be an electrical engineer, yes. <laughs> like you, mm -hmm. Or you a doctor. Should. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you're going to be us, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> well, in, in my experience, it wasn't necessarily in, as important to have a specific degree, but just to have a degree would have helped me a lot. I didn't have one, so getting a visa to work here was incredibly difficult without that. So it doesn't really matter what you do. It's kind of just good to have one. Do you know, does it work going the other way? Like if JD wanted to go live in the UK, would he face the same issues you have? Or is it just hard getting into the US, that's it? I think it's hard getting in anywhere. Yeah, I mean, any you know, first world country is gonna be hard. I think the US is incredibly strict for its population. I mean, there's a, it's like, there's a ton of space. England has less space, but I'm not sure. You know, I've never tried to <laughs> live in England. I just was just born there, so it's hard, hard for me to say. Why don't we make a video of me trying to <laughs> get my... I'll become an American citizen, throw away my English one, and then try and get back in. Yeah, they probably go. won't let me in. <laughs> we should do this. Let's do this. Let's make a documentary about it. Yeah. This sounds awesome. Let's risk your entire well-being <laughs> for this one video. Do you think you'll end, end up back in the UK at some point in your life? I don't know. I'm just asking. It's a lot, it's a lot of stress. And then with Brexit, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> this episode of the Received Podcast is also brought to you by Netflix's new series, The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance returns to the world of Thra with an all-new adventure. When three Gelfling discover the horrifying secret behind the Skeksis' power, they set out on an epic journey to ignite the fires of rebellion and save the world. From Jim Henson Studios, the series is an epic prequel series to the beloved 1982 Henson film, The Dark Crystal, with characters voiced by a star-studded cast, including Taron Egerton, Andy Samberg, Kate McKinnon, Helena Bottom Carter, Eddie Izzard, and more. Uh, at Comic-Con, be on the lookout for our very own Barbara and Lindsay, who will be there visiting the Netflix booth. Hey, you're Barbara. I am Barbara. You're going to be there visiting the Netflix booth. Yeah, we'll be there July 18th at the Netflix booth. Uh, me and Lindsay are actually going to get transformed uh, into some characters from the movie. Nice. I don't know if I want to spoil it yet, but uh, they're very creepy looking. And so we're really excited. Um, yeah, come check us out. If you're going to be at Comic-Con, we're going to be right at the Netflix booth. Come hang out. So if they're there, they should go visit Comic-Con. And if not, I'm sure they can follow on social oh, and, yeah. and keep up with all of that stuff. It's really, really cool to be there at Comic-Con. You know, we've been going to Comic-Con for so many years to finally be involved with, like, such a big activation. I know. And I think super cool. technically this is going to be the first Comic-Con I'm cosplaying at, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is all about time. I'm curious to see how it comes out. Me too. I'll, right. I'll take a picture for you guys. All right. Uh, thank you. I'll keep up. I'll keep up on social. <laughs> uh, so make sure you check out The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance coming to Netflix August 30th. It's not that far away. So thanks for sponsoring this episode of Receive Podcast. Um, so now Gavin and I can probably tell the worst travel story we ever had because yesterday, I don't know if you heard, we announced that our show Immersion is coming back. Thank you. And... Uh, we are doing uh, a special televised episode of Immersion for the Discovery Channel for Shark Week. So it's an immersion all about sharks, which meant we had to explore video games. Like, luckily, as you guys know, I like Sea of Thieves a lot. There's lots of sharks in that. So we did lots of fun stuff. My whole goal, though, was, this is my whole goal, was to get Michael and Gavin, or Michael or Gavin, into the water with sharks, with real live sharks. That's like I spent the whole time trying to do that. What's wrong with you? Uh, you're delicious. I just wanted to see if the sharks would go for it. Um, but uh, we had a thing where it was, it was the most insane travel that we've ever had. Because we were supposed to get to a place in the panhandle of Florida. Anybody here from Destin, Florida? Yeah? Single person over there? Well, he's very polite. Oh, yeah. He just raised his hand. Didn't go <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo or anything like that. 
How do you? How are you getting home? Because getting to your town was the worst experience of my life. No offense. <laughs> oh, he lives you, here so, now. so you don't he live there. Never go back. He Not anymore. He tried to go back, but he just didn't make it. <laughs> so what so, happened? So you're a liar. I got it. I'm with you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. You, look, you put your head down. That was just a joke. <laughs> it's, a, it's a comedy podcast, sir. <laughs> and your hometown's a joke. Hey! <laughs> See what I did with it? Okay, uh, so we had to go to Destin, Florida. I love you. Uh, we had to go to Destin, Florida, and uh, the way that we had to get there was we were just going to fly to DFW, literally like 20 minutes away from here on a plane. And then we were going to fly from there to Destin, Florida, or Fort, what's nearby there? Fort? Probably Pensacola. Pensacola. Oh, that was penis. The airport code was penis. Oh, Gam was so excited about penis. That was PNS. PNS? Yeah. Yeah, Love PNS it. is the airport code there. Oh, Fort Walton God. Beach? Fort Walton. That was it. We were oh, going okay. to go in there. Anyway. I'm looking at Google Maps. We land in DFW like 2 in the afternoon. Our flight's going to leave at 7. It's tornadoes in Dallas. This is like a month ago. There's tornadoes in Dallas, so our flight was canceled. It was... We were in the Dallas airport for 18 hours, I want to say, and then we had to fly from there to New Orleans where we chartered a bus at 2 in the morning, and then <laughs> they drove. We, I slept on the floor of the bus. Like it was underneath <laughs> one of the seats, and then we chartered the bus to end up in Destin, Florida by like 8 or 9 in the morning to then do the thing that we did in Destin, Florida. There was a lot of discussion on sort of like where we should fly to, because we could, we could now get out of Dallas, but there were places we couldn't go because of like airport issues, so we we're trying to figure out where to go. We ended up going to New Orleans. But I also was just like, I, I was kind of like not paying attention, just like I'm going to just spend all night in the airport. You were looking into like trying to hire a, a jet, and it was insanely expensive. You're like, well, we're not doing Because I watch Casey Neistat videos. <laughs> something like, you can hire a jet, right? Yeah. That's a thing a person let me, can let do. Let me ask for a quote for a private jet. All right, maybe not. Right. Um, Would you, Gus, what do you think it costs if you say, hey, we just need to charter a jet to do one leg? Like from we're, Dallas to Pensacola or something like that? There you go. Uh, I would guess... Twenty-five thousand dollars, dude. You should. Are you like flying private jets? That's exactly <laughs> what it costs. It costs. I know Jesus a lot about the aviation Christ. industry. <laughs> Twenty-five thousand dollars. That like was fucking insane to me. Ten, Obviously, it was like ten nope. international first-class tickets. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. Ah. Okay, that's a good way to look at it. But it's like a two-hour flight. Holy cow. That was the tw the tweet I made at, the, at that time. Was when I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna try and get on the upgrade list for the next flight. And I hadn't really been paying attention to where we were eventually flying to. So I went to the desk. I was like, hey, can I just get on the upgrade list uh, for my flight? And he was like, where are you flying to? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, can you please tell me? I don't know where I'm going. That's a sign that you travel too much. Yeah. But that was crazy. But we, it was, the thing that we did in Destin was awesome. And then we got to go down. Uh, if you saw the shot that we showed yesterday, it's like there, we, one of the other locations we got to do was the Bahamas. Uh, with a really cool dude named Luke Tipple who was fucking amazing, a shark expert, a really incredible guy. So hopefully when you, there'll be more information about the show, we'll be able to show you some more clips from the show as we get closer to an air date. But hopefully you guys will tune in and watch it on the Discovery Channel when it comes out. Please tell me you will. And if you want to go over to like your parent's house or your uncle's house and like program his DVR to watch it, that's not so bad either. That's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> Just gaming the system. We do that on YouTube all the time. <laughs> you can do that via app, right? You can set people's uh, DVRs to record stuff? Did you hear what he said? You can do it via app. <laughs> Prove him wrong. Try it. I, I do that at home all the time. Like, if I know I need to record something on TV, it's like, I'm not going to be there. Like, I just do it via the app on my phone and be like, okay, that, there, it's recorded. I'll why, be able to why watch you it you just whenever. watch it on demand? Because I'm going to watch it, like, I don't know. That's a really good you question. You want to watch it, like, 10 a.m. That's, that's a really good question. With I ads? should watch it. But on demand also has ads. Oh, does it? Yeah. I don't have TV. You're, trying, you're talking down at me? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to watch uh, Walking Dead on like the AMC service. Like they had their own standalone service. And I went to go watch it. And it was one of the weirdest experiences I've had. Because it was like, it's a, where TV met online video. And I was watching the first segment of the show. It gets to a commercial break. And then it says, showing you ad one of seven. I was like, what? What, and they were completely unskippable. I had to sit through seven ads to then go to the next one. It's like, of course, why wouldn't someone on TV think this is totally fine? We show five or six ads in a row. No big deal. Could you imagine if you did that on one of your videos? Oh, my God. <laughs> but some people kind of do. Like, now it's like sometimes you watch a 15-minute video and there are like seven mid-rolls. Do you do mid-rolls on your stuff? 
maybe one, and I'm putting out like 18 minute videos. But That's, uh, yeah, it's kind of understandable. But I also think like it's like you can get away with it if you're more entertaining than me. Uh, but <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like, I just I'll throw, I'll slip in one, one maybe they they won't care. But I, yeah, I I, uh, I lost my uh, my YouTube Premium subscription for two months because YouTube gave it to me, and then uh, and then I was like, oh, this is horrible. This is what everyone <laughs> wait, else is experiencing. you got free YouTube Premium? No, yeah. what? I, I honestly <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're, you're angry in, about the twenty dollar a month thing or whatever it's. I've, I've been in four YouTube originals, and I'm like, do I? Do you like? Do you want me to pay for that service still? Because I use it. I like download yeah. stuff, and they're like, oh yeah, you got to pay for it. You, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Do you, That's, did you have to pay for YouTube TV? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. No. So did I. How do we get on the? You. Oh, oh my God. We get on the fill list. Holy cow. See, Maybe that's Google's business model, Gavin. They put people in shows so that then they'll pay for the subscription to watch it. <laughs> that's what they'll do. And their whole family, too. <laughs> how to steal from Google. How to steal that's, why. Google. that's how you do it. I wonder if that's what they meant. Uh, well, that was me. B. Philip oh, Franco? Was <laughs> Gavin was curious if Google would return results on how to steal from Google, like if they, or if they would censor that. Yeah, my original one was, at, like, how can I make the Google stock plummet? And I, I figured Google wouldn't give you any information for that. Then I just simplified it. So how do you steal from Your computer Google? just self-destructs all of a sudden. <laughs> it just melted. And then, I had to, no. and then I just had to ask Jeeves. Traitor, my... <laughs> traitor, traitor. Are, are there really any, I mean, I worry about that, right? Like, what was it? Recently, Facebook had that outage where Facebook wasn't showing images. WhatsApp was having trouble. Instagram, like, they all went down at the same time because F Facebook owns all of this. And... Uh, are there really any alternatives in, from a search perspective to Google? Like if Google goes down and you need to find something on the internet, what's your go-to backup? Like what do you do? Do you just not look? Bing, I'm not looking Bing. for porn. Yeah, wow. wait, yeah, are those Microsoft employees? Who are you? <laughs> wait, yeah, there you go, there yeah. you go. I'm Duck actually surprised you don't use one of those encrypted, yeah, I don't use Google for searching. DuckDuckGo. Yeah, DuckDuckGo is the big one I, I hear about a lot. Why, what are you searching? Just stuff. Mind your own business. Gavin or Google, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm looking up. So actually, because I only use Google for Gavin or Google, my search history must be so fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> like we why, should. I'm looking up why cats are scared of cucumbers. We should do a Bernie or Bing. <laughs> or Barbara <Man>. or Bing. <laughs> or Barbara or Bing. Yeah, Gus, can I ask you a question? I've been thinking about this all week. By the way, anybody here from California? Besides Phil? Phil's from California? I didn't mean, sorry Phil, I didn't mean to dox you by saying you're from California. <laughs> you're fine, you're good. So, you guys had a huge earthquake. I hope everybody's okay, I hope your house they're, is okay. They're, they're all here, they're all okay. <laughs> Their houses, they live there. You they said have, I hope you all are okay, they're all obviously okay, they're they here. Could, they, you guys could have just arrived this morning. Gus, fuck you. I'm trying to show a courtesy <laughs> to people that have Who, who here from California thing? arrived this morning? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was really good. Guess where I was, <laughs> California. Uh, right, enough with guys, the virtue signaling, the Bernie. How jealous are you that you're not there for that earthquake? I'm a little jealous. Have you been like thinking about it all week long? I, I, I have. Like We should we should have moved RTX to LA. Why do you like earthquakes so much? He's never been I've one. never been in one. He wants to be in one. This one was like 45 seconds, this last one, right? Yeah. 7.1 7 .1 magnitude. The craziest thing is people film their pools, and the, and the water in the pool is going, that's like the, the best visualization of an earthquake that I can imagine. There was a great video I saw on Twitter. You know that trend going around now where people try to kick the bottle cap off of a bottle, and it's filmed like from like someone has the bottle like right in front of it? They were doing that, and the earthquake hit right as he started kicking. Did he still get the bottle cap off? No, but like he basically like went to kick and then like fell backwards, and the bottle was like shaking like this. It was really just like insane timing. I, I saw a video of uh, a woman filming herself putting makeup on, <laughs> and she's putting her lipstick on right as the earthquake hits, and then she just ends up with like a huge streak of <laughs> lipstick <laughs> up her cheek. But uh, like her her home was swinging so much it's like that must have been on top of like a really tall building right because like to see that level of sway and to see things falling off like that um yeah i mean i i want i, I want to feel it i want to be one have you ever been in an earthquake phil uh just a small one but you want to feel it that's insane it, it like, goes, I, I think it's because you, you're probably thinking of it as a roller coaster and not the most horrifying moment of your life no i bet it's horrifying like i i, I it's because i can't so, imagine what it's like like, the, the, the thing you always consider a constant is, like, the ground. 
right? It's like that doesn't move. It's like the one thing in your life that never moves is actually moving. Gus just wants to feel something. Yes. <laughs> when you're as old and, and, and jaded as me, you need something to start your heart back up. I really, I really don't understand that at all. Like, if you see a, if you see a video of a plane crash, you're just like, ooh. <laughs> Who are you asking that question to? Oh, he actually is. <laughs> Gus, would you like to be in an avalanche? He has to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no. I want to say no. I, avalanches terrify me. Really? Because it's more than just the ground moving. It's like the ground falling at you. Well, it's like but that can happen in an alive. earthquake. It could cause a massive mudslide that buries yeah. you. I'm it, not... Is part of it the surprise? Because like, if you want... Like, no, 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 no. I, I would prefer it wasn't a surprise. <laughs> so you would know in advance. Three, right. two, one. <laughs> Earthquake. <laughs> Do you have like... Are you like an adrenaline junkie? God, no. What? <laughs> Gus? Well, he wants to be in an earthquake and experience an avalanche. Yeah, I like this because it's like, I, I want an adrenaline rush, but I don't want to have to do anything for it. Right. And I want to make sure I don't poop my pants. Nail it. Gus, do you even have adrenaline? I don't know if I've ever... I felt some the other day. <laughs> Did you, anybody here, uh, I saw that your friend, Gavin, Destin, um, he went down to Argentina for the eclipse. The eclipse, yeah. All those photos of that were amazing. Is there our Argentinian friend is here? Yeah, there he is. Hey. How you doing? Hey, cool. So you came here and you missed the eclipse. It was cloudy, it was so cloudy. no one saw it. If I, I can't wow. see, no one sees it. Wow. <laughs> He's happy that nobody got. Everybody went to my home country and was horribly disappointed. <laughs> Take that. So fuck you. I'm he, in Austin. He did some sort of move when he stood up. Was that like an Argentinian dab? What was it? <laughs> I think that's it's a bow. Like a, a, a very regal bow. That's the, that's the official move for fanfare right there. He's got it down. Show that to Matt Hollum next time you see him. <laughs> yeah, so Dustin went there and he recorded it. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't know this was coming. There was the big one a couple of years ago in the U.S., and, but it, uh, you know, and I think it went through like the Pacific Northwest a lot. I keep popping on this mic. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd go. Do you know what he's filming down there? Can you, has he said what he's filming publicly? Because I'm kind of curious if Destin's down there or what it is. Other than the eclipse? Well, like, is it like, you know, he's approached to science stuff. Like he did the, what is it, Coriolis effect, is that how you said? Yeah. Monosol all the <laughs> Coriolis. Cor Coriolis? Coriolis. Corleone effect, thank you. Wow. Uh, and he did it with the kiddie pools with a dude down in Australia. That yeah. kind of stuff I love. Veritasium? Is that where he is? He's down in Australia, Veritasium? Isn't that the other guy in that video? I, believe, I don't know, remember. It's a long time ago. Do you, Phil, do you still go to VidCon? Uh, well, this is actually, this is, I'm not, this is my first time not going. I, uh, I just wanted to do something different. Like, I, I think people have like this, I'm anti-corporation because I'm not going this year, but I'm like, yo, corporations sponsor me every day. I just, want, I just want to do something different. But no, this is the one year I'm not going. You could do your own convention just to the side of VidCon. I think it'll work. I think it's perfect. I think it'll be solid. Probably no security, I'm thinking, <laughs> is the ideal thing. And the schedule's just stuff. <laughs> You're waiting in a parking lot in a line. Yeah. And, and, you... then, and then I think once it bombs, then they'll invite me the next year. No, then... Is that, wait, is that what happened? Never then, mind. <laughs> then you make a, a, a behind-the-scenes documentary about the whole thing. Well, that was Shane Dawson that did that. Uh, yeah. And everything's fine. Um, Made everything better. You know, we were talking about the eclipse from a few years ago. I was trying... We, it, it didn't pan out, but uh, the eclipse that happened in North America, I think it was last year, happened during the time we normally tape our podcast. And I was trying to figure out a way that we could do a remote podcast live from the point in the United States where the eclipse would be the most pronounced. Was it in like Wyoming or something? Yeah, it was somewhere like that. Uh, but just, we, we just couldn't pull it together. I was like, it would be really cool to do an outdoor well, podcast. because we line. didn't have Eric back then. I think we did have Eric, but he had just- Eric, you suck. He had just started. I was like, let's try to get this done. And we just, we just couldn't pull it together. Well, we do the- But he did make Sunday Monday happen. We did. So. The steak off is outside, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the first part of the steak off is outside. Yes. Yeah, so, so why couldn't you just do a whole podcast outside? Because the stake-off occurs about 30 feet away from the broadcast booth. You guys realize that, right? I mean, I'm not, I feel like I'm a lunatic here. But it's outdoors. <laughs> I see where Gus is going now. Okay. It's in the sun. A non-eclipse sun? What's that? A non-eclipse sun? Allegedly. Who knows? Could be one of Gavin's night rainbows. Am I being gaslit? Am, am I being Gus lit right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't start. 
Don't please, please don't turn the gaslighting stuff. I can't take it anymore. I felt like I was crazy. So what are we? What are we up to now? We do the steak off. Phil, do you, if you want to come down to Austin sometime. Sure. We it, once a year we have a steak off where we cook steaks. This year was horrifying. Barbara it was and great. Gavin cooked steaks for no, us. No, 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 Mariel. Oh, now you're saying Mariel. I said that on the it show. It was Team Barbara that did it. Well, yes. And, you, know, you have a team leader and then a player. The always open crew and Gavin yeah. made us steaks. But in the past, Gus and I have made steaks. By the way, I'm 2-0. and Gus is, has yet to win. Sorry, Gus. Uh, one of us likes to experiment and try new things. The other one makes sous vide crap. <laughs> the lazy man's 2-0. Oh, scoreboard. That's I'm just saying. Scoreboard. Scoreboard stands. Do not like sous vide. Look at that. Monday morning but steak offing. Why are, you, why are you trying new stuff in the competition? Because I like to experiment. I like to experience new things. I like to find. I like, like, I like to eat no Jolly sp- Ranchers. That's Literally. like if you go up. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's like if you go up to bat and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go lefty this time for no reason. Why not? Well, actually, the, <laughs> first, year, the first year I did do uh, a recipe that I, I make regularly. Okay. Uh, and I lost with that one. So in the second year, I was like, I'm going to try something totally different, something I never make, and, uh, and see how it goes. And it, 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 failed. it failed. Okay, yeah. So we've done the steak off. We've done Sunday, Monday. Pancakes. We have the pancakes, obviously. So we got our, we got our last one we got to like, round out the calendar with. Aren't, aren't we talking about doing... Taco Tuesday, Monday. Taco Tuesday, Monday. I think we need Taco Tuesday, Monday. I think that so was it. Nice we did I just want pizza, pizza sphere. Pizza sphere. Uh, pizza t- sphere. That would be that would be a good one to do. Eric Eric's figured out the pizza sphere. He figured it out. He's See, I, I worry, I worry about Eric's idea. I just don't think it's gonna. Well, I, why don't you explain it? I got a text from Eric. I think at like two in the morning one week, <laughs> and it was like, I think I figured it out. I've cr- I've cracked it. We want to make a three-dimensional pizza. So it's like pizza exists as a circle, as a flat 2D food. No, it doesn't. Pizza yes. is already three-dimensional. I Hear hate me to out. break this to you. Okay. Overall, it's two-dimensional. The, thir- the third dimension is phoning oh. it in. Overall. <laughs> so we want to go from a circle to a spherical pizza. Is, isn't, that just like a, isn't that just like a hot pocket? <laughs> like just a round hot pocket? Problem solved right there. But Simplest a hot pocket answer. is only a bite. We want... A large pizza sphere. So you, so you want an extra large pizza bite? Yes. I'm worried okay. about what people That's make. That's possible. It. Are you saying there's like a sphere of dough with, fill, or are you saying it's stacked pizzas that get bigger and then get smaller? <laughs> I would think that we, way. We've thought. I, I don't want to spoil anything. We've thought about many options. It's like for a dice pursuing sphere. This. Here's what we should do: just take a bunch of pizza, blend it down, and then mold it like a burger patty into a sphere. I'm just kidding. That would be fucking gross. Yeah. Barbara, how the fuck do you make hamburgers? That sounds disgusting. (laughs) Take a cow, put it in a blender. (laughs) Eric, Eric, is it a bunch of pizzas stacked, or is it like a big hollow pizza? Listen. No, there's none none of it's... No, listen. Eric Badur, everybody. Okay, listen. None of it's... None of it's hollow. No, hold your applause until I get this out, because this is when it's good. No, it's, just hold your applause, period, while Eric's on stage. Thank it, you. All of it. Listen, all of it. Every bite that you take is fully pizza. Everywhere. What's any that bite mean? that you take. Every bite. In a hot pocket, if you bite the top middle of a hot pocket like a psycho, if you did that, you would only get top middle crust. There's no pizza element. In the pizza <laughs> sphere, in the pizza sphere, <laughs> there is pizza in every bite. You will not escape the pizza no matter three, how three, hard you try. 360 degrees of pizza. 360 degrees of full pizza. Yeah, just That's, blend it And I it figured down. it out. I cracked the code. We'll do it. We'll do it on the podcast. It feels... <laughs> I, th- I think he's got it. I'm not worried anymore. No. That... I felt like he was running for president, and I was like, I'm going to vote for him. I don't think he can deliver. <laughs> Pizza sphere for I, all of you. <laughs> I don't think he can deliver on that. I think he's over-promising. I do. I don't think he's going to deliver on it. That's why it's good for politics. It's, it's, it's something that works on paper. <laughs> something that works on paper. <laughs> Phil, do you, are you allowed to talk about politics? Because oh. you do comment on uh. modern events. We're not allowed to talk about politics. Period. What? You're We're not, not allowed. You're not We're allowed? Not? What? No, every time we talk about politics, we're like, shut up. Is that why you didn't read my other Gavin or Google that you sent? <laughs> oh, shit. Wow, censorship the burning. The phrase is... <laughs> oh, I'm in the wrong one here. Sorry, I feel like an old man with this thing. Oh, here we go, Gavin. Uh, the phrase is, how many? How many? 
How many spiders crawl on you at night? How many spiders crawl on you at night? Or how many children do you have to lock into cages before you realize that you might be the bad guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, so yes, I did skip that one. Why didn't you read that one? I, I think that one's pretty apparent. <laughs> I, think, I think that one was pretty obvious. Can I say both are Google? <laughs> yeah, but every time we talk about politics, it's just like, don't, don't do it. Don't talk about politics. But I, I feel like you can't, you can't sit still on but a moving train. You're in a good, you guys are in a good place where you don't have to. Like I, uh, like I, I feel like my day is everyday toxicity around that stuff. And I, like my favorite video that I've done in the past year is a stupid video I, I shot with my son where he said that his favorite thing about his friends was the bones inside of them. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, more of this. Yes. <laughs> more of this. This is how the other side of you two lives. That, that, that reminds me of a, like the thing, like I said, I love, I love reading like sites like Reddit because like you, people... It's just like a brain dump from people, like a perspective you never think about. One of my favorite things I ever read was, uh, your bones are all wet right now. <laughs> Hot. Why are we all and having like, these? I never thought about that. That's so great. Every bone in my body is wet, which is really <laughs> disgusting to think about. Well, Ashley, Even we were like talking about this. Ashley is now probably seven and a half months pregnant. So end of August. <laughs> and she was... I forget what it was. We were, she was in the office the other day, and she was compa comparing physiques with Blaine, and they were they were each talking about their gains, and she's like, "Yeah, I got a ton of gains," and Blaine's like, "I got a ton of gains too." I go, "Yeah, but Ashley has bone gains, and you don't." And Blaine was disappointed that he didn't have bone gains. She has what 206 more bones than everyone else at this point. I which bet he had creepy bone to gains. Think about it all. I bet he had bone gains later that night, though. Yeah. Hello. He Wait, had sex. Bernie, did you did you guys do the uh, did you do the 3D image? That 3D image. You're it's, talking about the ultrasound yeah, 3D image. Yeah, it's horrifying. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you want to see your baby and also inside your baby? It's 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 a lot. It's like you get a picture of your kid way too soon, right? It's 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 like it's an actual 3D image. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like you 3D print your kid, basically. Can we we could do that. We could probably 3D yeah, print. Yeah, I was say, can we replace the golden Gus on on the spot? No. With Bernie's can't. unborn child? We can't. And also, the technology, by the way, is not perfect, so it's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like occasionally you get an ultrasound where it's like, oh, I'm having a baby demon, you know, because the way the ultrasound <laughs> looks. This 3D image is a lot like that. It's kind of like. Okay, thanks for showing me that. Yeah. Please take it away from me now. <laughs> was it Ashley or you that said that you hope that your kid doesn't get your head for her sake? Ash, do you, yeah. I got a big head, so that's a lot to deal with. Yeah, she's making a grimace. <laughs> she let me feel and kick the other day. Isn't that weird? It's a crazy. I don't know how you get used to that. It's, it's weird to me every single time. Every single time it's like crazy that there's like a living person there like kicking around. Also, it's like, how do you live in a space like that? Like, how do we all have no memory of like being jammed into a space that's literally as big as we are? It's as small as it could possibly be. Do you want that memory? No, thank God. Because yeah. we don't have any memories for the first several years of our life. Why not? Because you have no way to store that. Do you have a brain? But you don't have the context or the language to store that. But that would be horrifying because right. think, of, think of how small you are as a baby and then think of just like, I don't, I don't know if any other parents, like you don't think of the, the child as a, another person for a while so you're, you're around it naked and it would be horrifying for that child because they would just, they would, they're like this big and they have the worst view of you at all <laughs> times. So I think it's good, I think it's, it's self-preservation. <laughs> I remember being really young and like walking in and out of grocery stores and thinking about how heavy doors are. Like pushing on a door, like before automatic doors, like trying to push a door open, like a glass door in front of a, mm -hmm. a grocery store. Now it's like, it's nothing. As an adult, you're just like, whatever, yeah. it's a stupid door. But just like having that perspective difference is wild. And it's something we never think about anymore. Like your whole experience of the world is, for the most part, as an adult. And you forget like all of these things yeah. you had to go through and learn when you're young. Like, one, don't shit your pants. Two, doors are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably a good thing most of us don't have memory of being breastfed. So I think that would screw up a lot of people. Speak for yourself. <laughs> My fondest memories. <laughs> <laughs> me. 
Although I, there is like, there is it, is, it does get creepy when it's like, there's an age at which breastfeeding is like, has a natural tapering off and ending. And I, someone, I remember, uh, was a coworker of an uh, ex-girlfriend of mine way back in college. And she was talking about breastfeeding her kid. And then she was like, okay, that's enough. And pulled away. And then the kid said, mama, no, more. And I was like, the kid was talking? <laughs> it was like, that seemed like, too much it's, to me. Like, it, what's the cutoff it's like, point? It's like Robin Aaron in Game of Thrones. Right? Like, it's like, <laughs> Mommy! It, and it, it's not great. Yeah, it's like, they, 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 it makes you, like, kind of uncomfortable. Like, oh, that's, that's too late. That's so, too long. So are you done with two? Is two your final number? Oh, yeah. No yeah. more. Yeah, I'm not getting outnumbered. Fuck that. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, like, even right now, like, having to play zone defense, or man-to-man -man is, like, enough. Uh, I'm not going to do zone. <laughs> yeah. Do you play. say that now? Just wait. No! Yeah. No, like, I'm... I've, I've like put it off more and more, but I'm, I'm just like, I really enjoy this, and it's to the point of I've wanted to get, I've wa so this is gonna be, this is gonna go nowhere. I wanted to get a vasectomy, um, went in, and then they asked me if I was uh, allergic to penicillin, and I was like, my dad said I was, but I've never actually tested it, and I had to go through this like, f four weeks of, of getting tested where they're just like poking and prodding you. Turns out, I'm not. I just, I've gone 32 years of my life thinking that I was allergic to penicillin. And and your dad just mentioned it one yeah, time. Yeah, but apparently it's like super common where yeah. it's like uh, people just, uh, doctors would go, uh, yeah, probably. And then people would just run with that for decades. And so, uh, yeah, so, and then I've used that as an excuse to not get a vasectomy because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also allergic. But I need to. my genitals cut up. There's, there's a urologist. I know someone who got a vasectomy. And uh, he picked his, the doctor to do his vasectomy because he thought it was the funniest name for a doctor. I, I can tell you the guy. He's here in Austin, right? Yeah. To, yeah he, I, it was the funniest name for a doctor to give him a vasectomy. And this, is not a, this is not a lie. It's not. The doctor's name is Dr. Dick Chop. It is. <laughs> Dr. Dick Chop. Dr. Dick Chop is a world-renowned vasectomy doctor. Right. I know a lot of guys that have gone to Dr. Dick Chop. <laughs> it's like, can you imagine? It's like, you, you, you grow it, like your career is based on your name, right? It's like, you, you were given this name as a child, and it's like, well, I know what my career path is for the rest of my life. I know what I'm going to later in life. Which is the only guys would do that, right? You would never go like, hey, Barb, who's your obstetrician? She goes, oh, it's great. Her name is Dr. Twat Stretch. <laughs> It's actually, yeah, a, I like the idea of a, a kid being born. He's like, my name is Oscar Winner. I guess I'll be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Dr. Vag swab. <laughs> Delicious. Well, whenever I have to deal with uh, a professional, like in, in various fields, I'll do that though. I'll find someone's like, oh, that name's funny. Like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that person. That seems like a bad medical choice. Well, not not necessarily. Well, I did but do it you with my doctor somehow. too. Yeah, I did. You do. <laughs> Medicine you for the law, right? Well, I mean, I make sure that they're reviewed well, but like my ins insurance agent was the same way. I found a banker with a, an unusual name. I don't want to say their names now because they're all <laughs> local and people will figure it out, but I can tell you backstage, they're all hilarious. You'll crack up at all of them. But it's, but it's memorable. It's like, what's the name of my... Oh, right, I remember. But also, Just it's like it the same thing. It's like, it is a weird way to make a medical choice, but even when like you're choosing a new doctor, they have their pictures there. What? Why? Do, do I need to see a picture of my doctor? Does I it like matter? seeing a picture. But then you, you look at it, and it becomes part of the way you choose yeah, your I doctor. Look, I look at them, and I go, does this person look friendly, and do their hands look warm? <laughs> <laughs> How do you tell if someone's hands are warm in a photo? You can't. I've tried. <laughs> you just project that on I've them? I've been wrong many times. <laughs> I gotta, uh, I'm in the process. My, I have a weird thing where my, get, my dentist ghosted me. No, wait. It's... it's I had uh, these Invisalign things, and then I got to the end of the Invisalign, and I was supposed to get a retainer, and he just wouldn't return my calls. And so, like, right at the end, of, it was like two freaking years. Maybe he died. Things. No, no, he's is they they were gonna call me back any day. It was one of those things. Any day they're gonna call me back, and he just didn't. So now I have to get a new dentist because my dentist ghosted me. I feel bad. I feel like I took it personally. At Wait, least. so did did you call them? I called, I gave, you know what, it was a sense of pride where I called him five times. Oh, okay. And then I just gave up. And then my six-month appointment that I had scheduled just went by, and they were like, hey, you missed your six-month appointment. What happened? I'm like, you, come on, guys. So wait, like, you had an appointment, and then you didn't go? Well, yeah, I was done. I was so out. you ghosted so him. You ghosted, yeah. Pride, Gavin. It's not pride. He, he you missed your me. dentist appointment. What's that? <laughs> you just I know. Did you still go to the dentist? 
Yeah. Like a lot of adults skip out on it. Like they just like, eh, yeah. When was the last time you went? Gus has like perfect teeth apparently. Uh, I think the last time I went was about five years ago and before that it was 10 years and before that it was 10 years. Jeez. Uh, and then go, they, they did the horrible thing where they told you you're fine. Right, I went and they're like, behavior. oh, your teeth are amazing. They look great, they're in great condition. I was like, oh, cool, all right, bye. You know that all your teeth are wet right now. <laughs> it's true. Elise told us a story this morning about how she had to cancel a dentist appointment because she sharded. What is the theme of this podcast? What is happening? That's our title. That's our title. Eric, what is the theme of this podcast? She sharded? She sharded, and so she, can't. she was supposed to go to a dentist appointment, and she just decided to cancel. It's weird because the it. dentist part of that story is not relevant in any way whatsoever. Yeah, what does she think it's like dentist? that was just the end of her day. No matter what came next, yep. that day was over. It was like me in kindergarten. <laughs> Elise is just like Gus in kindergarten. <laughs> yes, that is correct. She, All right, well, I think we're out of time. Do we want to take one question from the audience? <laughs> Literally one? Do you want to? You want to we, haven't we haven't taken a question on the Rishi podcast in years and years and years. Hey, there's Hannah. Hannah, what's up? <laughs> you ghosted Hannah. You ghosted Hannah. He, 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 go he ghosts me all the time. Don't worry about it. Don't oh, feel bad. stop it, Hannah. I'm not ignoring your texts. What do you got? You guys remember Hannah from the podcast previously? She came Woo! on and talked with us. Here, come on closer. Yeah, come on up. Come up here. Yeah, what, we, what's we can't, what's I going can't on? Hear you. And while, while Hannah's coming up, anybody else? Well, we can take one question from those. It has to be a great question. Great, Ooh. great question. How about this guy right here? Yeah, you in the hat. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yell it. Uh, we said a great question. Then he said, "I wouldn't call this great." I just this did guy this, over here, meanwhile, I just did this raised his hand. Mad. You said it has to be a great question. He put it down, thought about it, and then raised his hand again. <laughs> what was the actual great question? Dude, so this <laughs> guy, no, no, Hannah, get I up know here. you. I know you. This guy's asking us: Is Neapolitan ice cream one flavor or three flavors? It's three flavors. It's, listen, dude. It's three flavors. You're, it's you're, three flavors. You're trying to push an agenda. You got like, look. You need to accept reality, dude. This is the second time I've had this conversation with you in one con. Wait. So is is the argument is hey, the I'm, argument that it's one flavor with three stages? It's like a Megazor. I regret all of these. We told him these had to be great questions, and this is dude, what I we love got. Ending it alone. Yeah, he verified it. He put it down. And he was hey, like, Hannah, this is up? a great question. All right. We'll sort of do that. Okay, so, Mr. DeFranco. Oh, no. The fact that you are a guest on this RT podcast and I am not, I'm not going to lie, it makes me insanely jealous. Okay. So, I've decided to do what I deem to be the only rational response. I made you a hair bow. Oh. Yay! What? Thank you. Thank you. It matches your shirt. Yes. Also, and do not worry, Mr. Sorolla, I, I have one for you as well. Thank you. I have one for your microphone on the podcast set. Can we crack our? You can do whatever you want, Thank man. Thank you so much. But don't make me snap. There you go. Uh, so what a great way to end the podcast. The the <laughs> Ruby guy in the elevator who had the cosplay is literally right there. <laughs> literally right there. <laughs> so you're at the podcast panel and you didn't know my name. How is that? Are you now like overnight have become <laughs> a huge fan? Maybe Gus makes us introduce ourselves every goddamn episode. Maybe he, was, maybe he just didn't recognize you in person. What's that? Maybe he just didn't recognize you in person. I just think that guy had great comedic timing. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Oh, he's waving you down. What's that? He can't, talk. he can't talk very well. Oh, he's got a mask on or oh, something. Oh, he's got a mask on. It's not like a medical thing. Okay. <laughs> I can't talk well either. Did you hear the Gavin or Google rules that I said <laughs> earlier today? Yeah, we, we can't talk well. We've just been doing a podcast for almost 11 years. I really can't speak. I don't know why I have a career in entertainment. I literally cannot speak. <laughs> what was it last week? Remember last week we were doing the podcast and I just entered a portion of the podcast where I couldn't talk. It like happens. I, every sentence I kept trying to say, like, I just couldn't spit it out. Should we all just give up? Why, why are we doing this? <laughs> we should just give up. Good, um, the last well, you remember Ryan Haywood. I don't think that guy has put together one coherent sentence in 10, 10 years. Really, has he? Not that I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, impos it's impossible. 
All right, is that it? Thanks for everybody That's coming it. out. Guess I'm looking at you here. Thanks for everybody coming out for the Thank RT you. Podcast panel. Thanks for our guest, Phil DeFranco. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video on YouTube. We, uh, we appreciate you watching and we have a lot more videos just like it you can watch. You can click on those videos down below. You can also like this video, which I would highly recommend you do because uh, then Gavin can eat. And uh, you can also subscribe to the Rusty channel and then you'll get notified anytime we have a new video just like this. Bet you're not gonna do it though. Yeah, I bet you're not, <laughs> chicken.